Don't know about you, but I'm definitely enjoying home games more than away games so far this season. Hello everybody and welcome back to OUFC Fan View. It's Ian here once again for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were away at Bristol City. So this game was obviously billed as the Liam Manning derby. Liam Manning certainly was the pantomime villain during this game and in the lead up to this game and probably will be when the sides play at the Kassam later on in the season. But more importantly, Oxford were coming off the back of two home wins and they were hoping that they could get their first points or even point on the road this season. And despite leading in the game and missing a glorious chance to go 2-0 up, it was the Robins who battled back for the victory in this game. And overall, you have to say, Bristol City deserved it. Well done to Bristol City. Well done to their fans. It's another annoying away day for Oxford United. This one finished Bristol City 2, Oxford United 1. And we'll do what we normally do on these videos. I'll go over the team news, I'll go over the game, and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. You can jump to any point of the video if you like. If you just want to see my final thoughts, that's absolutely fine. Just use the timestamps down below. But if you do that, the very least you can do is hit like on this video because that helps me out a ton. And if you do like the content, including my new predictions videos, yeah, I got this one wrong. It's another bad week for me. Hit subscribe. So let's move on to this team news then. And it's just one enforced change for Des Buckingham after that win against Stoke. Unfortunately, though, it is a big loss because it is Cameron Brannigan who's out injured with a knee injury. But last weekend, Rodriguez came off the bench and changed the game, really, when he replaced Cameron Brannigan. So let's hope he can do it from the start this week. Oxford's bench looks very strong and it's even a place for Kyle Edwards. Remember him? The lesser spotted Kyle Edwards. It's great to see him back. And it's a big if, but if he can stay fit, then I think he could have a big impact this season. Liam Manning's Robins are coming off the back of back-to-back 3-0 -back defeats on the road. And Manning makes three changes from the side that lost at Blackburn. Pring, Sykes and Mayalu are out. Roberts, Mahetmi and Armstrong are in. There's a ton of Oxford old boys in this Bristol City squad. Obviously, not to mention Liam Manning sitting in the dugout. But most of them are not featuring. The Robs, Dickey and Atkinson are both out injured. Mark Sykes is on the bench, as I already mentioned, alongside Marcus McGuane, who makes his place on the bench. But there is one starter, and that is Luke McNally, who starts in defence. So let's move on to the game then. And in this first half, although it did start quite cagey, it didn't take long, really, for Bristol City to get into their stride and to start moving the ball around with pace and starting creating chances. A number of fine sweeping moves had Oxford on the back foot. Mahetmi was the first. He got into space, cutting side. It was straight at Jamie Cumming. But then just two minutes later, it was a glorious chance for Bristol City to take the lead. It was Sinclair Armstrong headed wide, glanced his head a wide. He really should have scored. But it was an excellent ball in after another fluent move. And it was Roberts who got the ball into Armstrong. A real let off for Oxford United and City just kept playing their way through Oxford, really carving them open. Twine this time playing an excellent ball on 19 minutes into Mahetmi, who once again is in behind Oxford United. But he drills it once again straight at coming. And it seemed like it was going to be Mahetmi versus coming through this first half because just five minutes later he had another chance and coming yet again, making a pretty routine save. The yellows, or in this case the whites, had barely had a kick. But on 29 minutes, we take the lead. And I could not believe it. It was completely against the run of play. And I can't stress that enough. But Oxford did take the lead. Bristol City switched off from a free kick. Dembele ran forward to about the D. Played a ball through to Rodriguez. I think it was actually via deflection off Luke McNally. But Rodriguez was in on goal. Finished it very nicely. Thank you very much. We didn't deserve to be in the lead. We don't care. We'll bloody take it. But I'm not sure how we've done it. And that did rock Ashton Gate and Bristol City back a little bit. And for the rest of the first half, it was a lot more even. Bristol City did have a couple of decent chances with a couple of headers. Uh, the first was from a corner and it was Knight who headed over at the near post. And then Armstrong heading powerfully over the bar after another excellent cross from Roberts. 
But Oxford still had Dembele, and Sariki Dembele was proving to be the one shining light for Oxford United in this half. Whenever he got the ball, he looked extremely lively, running, beating players, driving at this Bristol City back line. He got about 25 yards out, middle of the middle of the goal, really, and he's driven a shot. It's a wonderful strike. O'Leary was beaten, but it rattled against the crossbar. It might have even hit the sort of joining of the post and crossbar and went wide. Oxford, again, third game in a row we have to make a substitution due to injury in the first half and it was Josh McEachern who was struggling and Will Vaults had to come on and replace him but Oxford did get through to half time at 1-0 not sure how we are leading this game because Bristol City have been very dominant and they created some superb chances particularly before Oxford went 1-0 up. Oxford have been struggling against the movement and the pace particularly of Twine through the middle and then Mahetmi and Roberts who are running off him on the wings. Sinclair Armstrong looking a real handful up front as well causing Brown and Moore a lot of problems but for Oxford Dembele really has been immense. He set Rodriguez up for the goal and he looked dangerous whenever he was on the ball really. Yeah, we're winning 1-0. Somehow we're winning 1-0. Is it going to stay that way? Join me for the second half. So although Bristol City did start the second half well, kind of in some ways picking up where they left off, Within the first five minutes, Scott Twine had drilled a shot over the bar. But then we got to the next two chances in this game. And this is where this game hinged. Really, really can't stress that enough. A fantastic break by Oxford United on 55 minutes. And it was Goodrum who freed Rodriguez on the overlap. Rodriguez sliding a fantastic ball across the six-yard box. Sparky was there. Mark Harris was there. But somehow... All he could do was turn the ball wide. It seemed like it was going to be a certain goal. Oxford should have been 2-0 up. And just a couple of minutes later, Bristol City made them pay. That miss proving crucial because Bristol City go up the other end. Knight's ball into the box and Armstrong converting from about seven or eight yards. It was a low cross in and Armstrong, powerful enough shot. And it went through Jamie Cumming and Bristol City were back to 1-1 when Oxford could have had... I should have gone 2-0 up. As you can imagine, the Ashton Gate crowd was roaring their side on and the Bristol City players had their tails up and the pressing and the counter-pressing was very impressive and they were swarming all over Oxford United. Oxford doing well to just kind of keep them at bay. Bristol City probably guilty of that final ball or that final shot just not being good enough. Scott Twine had a good chance from a free kick after Eddie Moore bundled him over, but it was probably too close to the goal. It was in the centre of the goal, in the D and he bent it harmlessly over the bar. But you sensed the goal was coming. You sensed that Bristol City would continue to get chances and they were probably going to tuck one away. And on 75 minutes, Bristol City got their goal. And it was via the penalty spot. Hirakawa, who came on as a half-time sub, and he looked very lively as well. Cutting in field, a lovely ball into the area for Roberts. Roberts cut back. Harris pulled him down or tripped him, dragged him down. Whatever you want, it looked a penalty to me. Referee gave the penalty. Narky Wells... Had just come on the pitch, really, but he powered home the penalty. <sighs> And Bristol City were in the lead. And for the final 15-20 minutes, Buckingham had to make changes. We saw Kyle Edwards come on. We saw Malcolm Abue come on. Dane Scarlett was already on the pitches already in this game. And Oxford did try to get back into this game. But as much as they tried, Bristol City still looked dangerous and looked likely of getting a third goal. And whilst Oxford had a little bit more pressure, there was nothing really sustained. And there was no real clear-cut chances to speak of. And it's another game away from home. We lose by the odd goal. But I have to say it's another game where we didn't really deserve to get anything out of it. So again, well done to Bristol City. <sighs> Once again, we're scratching our heads away from home. And that brings me on to my final thoughts. And I'll start with the home side in Bristol City. Very important win for you, Bristol City fans. Um, if Oxford would have been able to squirrel this out, or even getting a point, I feel that there would have been a lot of anger directed at Liam Manning. And you know, I'm going to take away the pantomime villain element of this. And I, I do feel that that criticism might be a little bit harsh. And it might be a case where, from what I'm saying, Oxford look a very different side at home to we do away. It might be the same for you guys. But I thought we saw 
the best of what I remember Liam Manning being so good at when he managed Oxford United, a side that's very assured on the ball, passing the ball very cleanly through the thirds, players popping up in in dangerous pockets of space, always seem to be winning and hunting to get that ball back very quickly on a counter press, and just looking dangerous throughout the game. I can remember a number of games where Manning had that, where Oxford were, were very, very good and used to swarm and dominate the opposition and that's certainly what you guys did today I thought Scott Twine was immense in midfield I thought that the runners off him in Mahetme and Roberts were a nightmare for Oxford all afternoon I thought Hirakawa when he came off the bench made a big difference as well and as I said also I thought Armstrong was a real handful up front and it just shows you the difference when you can bring on a player with the experience of Narky Wells I thought he was very good too so maybe it's a case of taking your home form into how you play away. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just based it on what I saw today, and I thought you looked a very good side, and a side that should be challenging up and in and around the playoffs. I'll be interested to know your thoughts on that. I'll be interested to know your thoughts on Liam Manning. Uh, please, absolutely fine if you want to put any mockery down below. Oxford treated this as a big day out, and you turned us over. So, rightly so, you can have all the bragging rights. But I'm interested to know your thoughts on this team, interested to know your thoughts on Manning, and interested to know if there is a difference between how you are at home to how you are away. I'm, I'm certainly seeing that from Oxford United. But all in all, good luck for the rest of the season. You know it's going to be another pantomime villain game when uh, you come back to the Kassam. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes when that game arrives. And that brings me on to Oxford United and yeah and I'm scratching my head about this one really because yeah I would say Bristol City are a good side no doubt about it and uh, but I just don't think we played very well today I, I thought we were under the pump early on I thought we were struggling and scrambling to try and thwart Bristol City when they were, seemed to just cut through us with ease with their passing and we didn't just seem to get much grip in this game there were obviously the, the main bright sparks were Dembele with his running Going forward, I actually thought Rodriguez looked pretty decent as well. Uh, but I thought that Tyler Goodrum really struggled with his, I thought his probably his poorest game for Oxford United so far. I thought he really struggled, particularly in the first half of Bristol City. We're getting a lot of joy down that right hand side, down Oxford's left. Yes, maybe it's unfair to how you judge Oxford against a team like Preston or a team like Stoke to a tide like Bristol City. You know that Bristol City are going to be very confident on the ball and very comfortable on the ball, and that's the way Manning is going to want them to play. So Boxer kind of had to sort of sit off them a bit and try and play them on the counter-attack. But I just don't think we were very good at doing that, and we were very lucky to be 1-0 up in the game. That being said, a golden chance to go 2-0 up, and Mark Harris has been wonderful this season, but he's had a bit of a mare this afternoon, hasn't he, with that glaring miss and and the uh, penalty that he gave away as well. I don't have the answer to this, so I'm curious to see what you say. I'm wondering what changes we can make to make us a bit more sturdy away from home, because we do look quite open, and we do look quite vulnerable uh, from what I've seen. But when we play at home, we seem okay. We've got the crowd behind us. We seem to be a lot more assured when we're on the ball. Um, but away from home, we look quite lightweight. And it looks quite lightweight going right the way through the midfield. So I wonder if something needs to change in there. I'm not really too sure what we can do to change it. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see Oxford go back to something like a 4-4-2 on these away games. But I just can't see that happening anytime soon but I, I would say there were some things that did encourage me today I, I thought that although it wasn't amazing I, I did feel that Dane Scarlett looked pretty decent at being able to hold the ball up when Oxford played it long to him he looked like he's got a little bit of pace as well I thought Edwards looked okay when he came on too I'd like to have seen Abue get into the ball a little bit more but Dembele is certainly we've got that option to just hit a ball into the channel when you've got the like Dembele who can get onto it and that is very encouraging because there's certainly going to be some times where when we're under the cosh. So, I feel just Buckingham's got a lot of work to do on this Oxford United side when we're away from home to make us more competitive because although we haven't, on the scoreline, we haven't taken any beatings, you felt if Bristol City would have got a third goal or maybe even a fourth goal that that wouldn't necessarily have flattered them, the same as when we played 
Coventry. But this is also what the championship's going to be like as well. It's a step up in quality. We are playing against better sides. Sometimes those better sides are just going to outplay us. We have to just take our lumps and move on to the next game. It's a massive next game. I think it's a home game against Burnley. So that certainly is going to be an acid test of the home form. But if we can get anything about that against out of that one, it is still an encouraging start to the season. Three home games, three wins, three away games, three losses. So far, overall, you'd certainly take nine points after six games. But let me know your thoughts, Oxford fans. Leave your comments down below. Um, it, it can't just all be about we missed Cam Brannigan, therefore he would make the ultimate difference if he came back because what if he's out for a while? Is it knee injury might uncover that he's out for a few months and we have to roll with the punches? But let me know. I'll be back to do a predictions video in the week. Oh my goodness, how bad am I at predictions? And then I'll be back to do another review of Oxford United versus Burnley which should be a monumental test. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I managed to even get through it without going on about Liam Manning too much. Maybe we should just move on from that now. I'll be back soon. Thanks very much.